numbness and tingling, whether in your arms, legs, hands, or feet, can feel as simple as a little nuisance or excruciating to others. In this video, I'm going to share some of the many causes and what you can do to help yourself. I'm Dr. Josh Gelber from Annex Family Chiropractic in Toronto. Now there's many things that can cause numbness and tingling in the hands or feet. Both WebMD and SpineHealth.com discuss and share these similar details and findings and you can see the links in the description below. Falling asleep in your arm or pinching the nerve in your leg from sitting too long, they'll cause temporary compression of the nerves. However, the way most people live is what will cause a more permanent compression leading to serious nerve-related conditions. If you drive more than half an hour a day, uh, sit at a computer, have old sporting injuries or car accidents in your health records, uh, you spend lots of time texting on the phone, there's an easy one, then you're susceptible to developing nerve compression issues. Now they're sometimes called neuropathy. Sometimes symptoms feel like electrical shocks. Other times it's a sense of weakness, uh, a hand that can't squeeze, an arm that won't open a heavy door, or a leg that feels like it'll give out at any moment. Maybe it feels like weakness or having heaviness in the arms or legs, you know, as if they're locked in place could feel like odd sensations, as if wearing you know, a tight glove or stockings, or simply just feeling clumsier with your hands or dropping things more often for no apparent reason. Now there's worse situations where there's a chronic throbbing that occurs, oh, that leaves people in intense pain and discomfort, and depending, you know, they become dependent on medication for basic and temporary pain. I'd love to provide some Canadian statistics, uh, but a most recent Approximately 20 million Americans suffer some form of peripheral neuropathy. Canadian links went around. I'll post the link in the description below and the various causes are discussed. But in my 14 years of clinical experience, what causes numbness and tingling usually comes down to one of three things. A problem with the wrist, a problem with the elbow, and a problem with the neck. Now most numbness and tingling is felt due to irritation of the nerves that come from the base of the neck travel through the shoulder, past the elbow, past the wrist, and into the fingers. The nerve pathways are quite similar down the leg, and they originate in your lower back, pass through your hip and your buttock, and cross through your knee. Now, before you can treat this condition, you need to first find out where the cause of the tingling is coming from. It usually comes from one of three places. The wrist, number one. Now, you may get a collapse of the carpal tunnel, that's the you know, bones in the wrist. And you can get numbness and tingling in the fingers along with severe pain in the wrist and hand from this. It's typically caused by repetitive strain injury, especially for those that work at keyboards or use motorized equipment that sends a vibration through the arms. Now, diagnosis can be made through a thorough history, testing, uh, including nerve conduction tests. The ankle could be a culprit, but it's less likely based on structure if we're thinking about the foot. Two, elbow, this is the least common of the three. Now chronic aggravation of the tendons at the base of the forearm, just below the elbow, they can irritate the nerves as they pass through. You may have heard the term golfer's elbow, you may have heard tennis elbow. Now that describes flare-ups of these tendons, one direction or another. You certainly don't have to play golf or tennis to strain these tendons, and in fact, most people I meet, they've barely picked up a, a club or a racket actually. Now, diagnosis for these can be made through a thorough evaluation of your day-to-day -day habits, palpation of that area, and orthopedic testing. Similar details do apply to the knee uh, as a least common source. The neck. Now, it's the most common of the three. Every peripheral nerve in the body attaches to the spinal cord at some point. And to reach it, it travels through small holes in the sides of the spine, like these. Now these holes can become closed by localized inflammation, bone spurs, spinal disc degeneration, or spinal misalignment. This can be caused by prior accidents or poor posture over time. Now if they're close enough, they can irritate the nerves that go down to the hand. Diagnosis can be made through a thorough history, nerve scan, x-ray, and orthopedic testing. Uh, if you're dealing with leg symptoms like sciatica, replay what I just said about the neck, but replace it with the low back. I've heard multiple examples and attempts at treating this issue too. 
Uh, people will take muscle relaxants, anti-inflammatories, over-the-counter meds, and even painkillers. They've rubbed this cream, they've applied that gel, uh, they've used a heating pad, cold pack, hot showers, Epsom salt baths, massage therapy, and constant stretching. Now, all of those are useful and they're positive modalities, but they're not always able to, to address the dominant cause. That's the key. I've met people who've had one or multiple surgeries, whether on their wrists, somewhere in their spine, and while in many cases the symptoms and the severity were improved, they weren't resolved long term. You know, when someone merely treats the symptoms with painkillers or anti-inflammatories, they get great short-term relief, uh, but the greater incidence of recurrence. And we know that means that it comes back. Now, this problem becomes more difficult to treat the more often you've had it. You're likely watching still and now because you want to help yourself. Good. I found that these three really common habits, they always make things worse. So here's what you can do about them. Texting. Watch your posture. When your head is flexed forward for prolonged periods of time, you're scrolling social media, you're playing a video game, the spinal cord gets stretched and the nerves in your lower neck are under tension. It's especially the case while you're doing this in bed with your head propped forward in the pillow. I know it's comfortable, it's relaxing, end of day. As your mom always said, sit up straight. You know, the same position with a book is no better either. If you're slouching as you do those activities, that same neck tension will put a, you know, put a pull in your spinal cord and the nerves all the way into your lower back. And that can trigger issues with the feet and legs as well. Not taking breaks. The muscles in your forearm fatigue over time when you're doing activities that use them. Typing the keyboard, digging holes in the garden, trimming in the grass, staying bent over, slouching, other activities with your hands, lower back, They'll tire out the forearm and the wrist. They'll tire out this area, leading to inflammation and pressure on the nerves. So take breaks. Stretch arms, legs, back, spine regularly. Okay, watch your sitting time. Because when we sit, it actually decreases the natural and normal arc of the spine, puts more pressure on the nerves for as long as you sit. Third thing, get the right pillow. If your pillow is too high or too low, it puts tension at the base of your neck. The nerves that travel all the way down to your arms and hands, they get stretched and irritated. That's not a pain, again. And once irritated, the body causes inflammation and the numbness cycle can begin. When you're lying on your side, your pillow should be the right size to keep your neck straight, not up or down, not tipped up or down. And on your back, there should be a support under your neck. Otherwise, you're gonna get that inflammation and aggravation. If you're finding yourself at an impasse, you're not getting the relief you want, Proper evaluation should at least include a nerve scan. Not a nerve conduction test, but a nerve scan to evaluate any stress on the nerves. It should include an x-ray to evaluate the alignment of the lower neck, lower back, and possibly orthopedic testing of the neck, shoulder, elbow, wrist areas, when we're talking the top. Uh, many people get a lot of orthopedic tests. They get them with great professionals, but they're missing nerve system tests. Now, I can speak to a lot of professionals in a general way, there's a lot of people who want to and may be able to help. Within chiropractic, there's two common approaches uh, with different analysis and care. There's chiropractors who focus specifically on symptoms and they want to deliver optimal relief. And the others whose focus is more about determining and removing the cause of the pain and symptoms. Both good options. You should seek out the type of chiropractor you want based on what you want to achieve. And if you've got questions about finding an ideal chiropractor, please ask a question below, make a comment, and I'll be glad to answer it. Mm -hmm.